What if you had an AI assistant that could draft emails, summarize reports, and organize your data in seconds? That's exactly what Microsoft Copilot can do. In this video, I'll show you how Copilot can transform your everyday task, helping you to work smarter and faster. You'll learn the key differences between the free and paid versions, plus see how easy it is to get started with Copilot Chat. And be sure to check out our upcoming videos where we'll dive deeper into how the paid version of Microsoft 365 Copilot can supercharge your favorite Microsoft 365 apps. What is Copilot? You may already be familiar with Microsoft 365 Copilot, and as the name implies, Copilot works alongside you to simplify and automate common tasks. It helps to know that Copilot is free in the Microsoft environment, but requires a subscription to use these AI features with Microsoft 365 apps like Outlook, Word, and Excel. So how do we launch Copilot? You can try Copilot for free via the Bing chat or using the Edge browser. You can even go to the Microsoft website, copilot.microsoft.com. In the Windows environment, you'll also likely see the Copilot icon in the Windows taskbar or start menu. And many newer computers have a Copilot key available as well. But with so many options, understanding Copilot and what is available can be a bit confusing because there's yet another way to launch free access to Microsoft Copilot. In January 2025, Microsoft's 365 interface was updated to include free Copilot options through Copilot Chat. However, this can be confusing as it doesn't mean Copilot is automatically available inside of the Microsoft 365 applications because that requires a paid version of Copilot. To use Copilot in Microsoft 365 applications like Outlook, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, you'll need a premium subscription. So this is an additional $30 a month US and this could change per user for business or enterprise accounts. With the paid version of Copilot, you have access to Copilot workflows inside of the applications where you can launch Copilot via the ribbon icon or use the Copilot key if it's available on your keyboard. It's also helpful to know that personal or family Microsoft 365 subscribers now also have free Copilot access included in their subscription. So let's take a quick look at the premium Copilot AI in our key applications. By adding Copilot to your workflow in Microsoft 365, you can, for instance, in Excel, create formulas, analyze trends, build visuals, pivot tables, and other data analysis elements. In Outlook, we can write or summarize emails, plan meetings, and much more. PowerPoint gives you the ability to summarize or create presentations with Copilot and even add new slides. And in Word, Copilot can help you to create and update content. Like most AI tools, the capabilities of Copilot are frequently expanding and updating. In this video, I'll focus on demonstrating the features of the free Copilot chat options. Look for future videos that explore specific Copilot features in the primary Microsoft 365 applications. As these videos become available, I'll add them to the description below. And whether you're using Copilot Chat or the paid version of Copilot, the key to getting the best results with Copilot is to create specific and detailed prompts with clear goals and context. Remember to speak or write naturally. There's no need for technical language. And keep testing and refining your prompts to optimize the results. And a quick reminder as we move into Copilot, this AI is constantly evolving. Its features could change at any moment, probably right now. So it's helpful to think of it like a toddler, a small child with great potential, but it's still learning and growing. Let's dive into Copilot. Here I've logged into my business or Microsoft 365 account. And from the rail or navigation at the left-hand side, I picked Copilot. Now notice your options or ways you can use Copilot to gather information or help you to create content. So these are suggestions and they will change. We could use Copilot to improve our writing skills, get step-by-step -step instructions, summarize main points on a topic. We could view additional prompts through the Microsoft site. And of course, we can then 
prompt Copilot specifically as to what we want. Let's try some examples here. What are the 10 helpful ways to use Copilot? I'll either enter or I can click on this option to the right hand side. So here I'm getting some ideas about how Copilot could help me within my applications, but let's look at some other examples in chat. What are the top ways to automate the processing of emails in Outlook? So here I get an overview of some of the options within Outlook where I could automate. These don't require that I have Copilot. These are just giving me some different options, for instance, like creating rules, having automatic replies, scheduling emails, and so on. Well, let's have a little bit of fun here. Write some funny out-of-office email responses to use while I'm on vacation from March 1st to March 9th. Also includes steps for how to set this up in Outlook. Let's see what we get. So you can see we have some different themes, I'm exploring new lands and seeking hidden treasures, etc. If your email is urgent, you might want to send a carrier pigeon. And you can see those other fun, lighthearted examples and then the steps as to how we can then set up your out of office replies using the automatic replies feature in Outlook. So this can really help you to make progress in being productive and save you time and have a little bit of a giggle along the way. Next, let's look at how Copilot could help us with a project and the topic is chocolate yum. <laughs> so please help me create a document on the history of chocolate in the world and add fun facts about chocolate. I wouldn't have to be quite so formal with this, but it always seems with this AI tools, if we were a little bit more polite with please and thank you, it seems to help our progress along the way. So let's see what happens here. All right, so I have the history of chocolate and we can see there's a little bit more of an overview. We have some fun facts. National Chocolate Day and other things as well that might be fun and interesting. And let's look at some other key things here. I could also ask it for more information about, can you add more details here? Key milestones, can you provide more fun facts? It's also detecting that I have some files on my system about chocolate. So these are some of the sources that I might be drawing from. But you can also see here, this is fun facts about. So it's good to be able to look at the citation. What are the sources? Where is this information coming from? That way we want to make sure that we're always checking and double checking these sources. Maybe I want to get more fun facts about chocolate. So I could ask for that. And let's add to our prompt. You can see we truly have here tens and hundreds of thousands of characters that we could use. So we could get very specific about tone, content, references, etc. Now you don't have to really worry too much about capitalization. We could be more casual with that, but let's see what we get now. So I have more fun facts here. And I have a section on chocolate consumption. So we have some specific numbers here and notice the citation or reference here. So this can be really helpful for us to double check the data that we're using, the reference that we're using. So just notice here, so current research. And once again, we can see that information referenced at the bottom as well. So this becomes then a, another option for us and information that we might want to include in a document for those citations for that source information. If I want to take these results and put them in a document, for instance, here is this option to copy. And so I've got a start on my document here. Here's my Word file where I have dropped in the results. I would need to update some of those citations and work with that. I've got some fun facts. I want to maybe combine those as well. But I've already have a good start on creating this document on the history of chocolate. Let's see what else I can do in Copilot Chat. I notice here that it's prompting me from a prompt that I had before, but I'll continue this one. Please create an image showing a variety of different types of chocolate displayed on a wooden table. Every time you put in a prompt, sometimes you need to get more specific or just let it know exactly what we're looking for here. So keep perfecting those prompts. Copilot is drawing on Microsoft Designer and let's see what happens. 
Here I have some possibilities here. Lots of yummy different kinds of chocolate and I can pick whatever one is the most appealing or even try again. For instance, can you provide a detailed description of different types of chocolate? I might need to get more specific on this. If I have one of these images that I like, I can simply select it. And here I have the option to download that. I can also copy the image. Let's put that into our Word document. Here's that image. And certainly using the options that I have in Word, I could certainly size this. Maybe I make it a little bit smaller, wrap my text, you get the idea. But I've been able to create from this then a royalty-free image that I could use in this report. Let's see what else we can do in Copilot. Perhaps I'd like to add some information about the top chocolate manufacturers. The prompt is create a table of the top chocolate manufacturers in the world and include their net sales from chocolate products. Let's see what we get. So here I have a table of those top chocolate manufacturers with the net sales. This is information that I could copy. Notice I have a source for this, so I could certainly explore that website a little bit further. Copy this into my report and build on this. Now I also notice these prompts, these suggestions here. Could you add more information? How do these manufacturers compare in terms of market share? All of these are options where we get more details from our conversation here in Copilot. Always important here, review your content for accuracy, grammar, and voice. For instance, you might create that report and then you could attach it and ask Copilot to rewrite the content to make it more casual or professional. Notice that we have that option to add content here. So that would be another choice for us in terms of really leveraging the power of Microsoft Copilot. And let's try one more thing here in Copilot. If you already have a lengthy document, you could ask Copilot to summarize it for you. So here I've uploaded a document that I have on the history of chocolate. It's about a 13 page document. And what I'll ask Copilot to do for me, just ask Copilot to summarize this document. I want to just get an overview of the content. This could really help you when you have very lengthy, work documents, and you're just trying to get an idea of the main content, get a, a good overview. In less than a minute, I have a great overview of this document. It's pretty amazing what we can do with Copilot. How will you start using Copilot Chat so you can really leverage the power of Microsoft 365 Copilot? Do you want to get even more out of Microsoft 365 Copilot? Check out my free handouts with Copilot prompts and best practices at softwarepro.com slash copilot. If this tutorial helped you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more time-saving Microsoft 365 tips. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.